and displeasure at the final whistle. Passions running high down at the field level. But the game is over, and it has been won by the visitors Pacific on short rest. And they have beaten Halifax Wanderers in their own backyard. Daniel Henry getting involved and pointing fingers of blame. Held back by his captain, Mo Omar. And continues the argument in this pushing and shoving and shirt pulling when there should be handshakes. And this finger pointing. And it's an uh, unpleasant ending to an absorbing game in the Maritimes. Zach Fernandez can only sit on the grass and wonder. He hit the crossbar at one end, having put the ball in the net at the other end of the field. But Pacific FC will advance. Halifax season's over. 1 0 to Pacific FC. Well, you don't like to see that at the end of what was an enthralling 100 minutes of football. And Pacific, once again, persevere. They're moving on to what looks to be a semi-final matchup against other Cavalry or Ford to try to get back to a game where they're playing for a title. They win in Halifax. 1-0 is the final. Wheeler, Wilson, KJ with you. Gentlemen, everything was against Pacific. They had to play pragmatic. They played on Wednesday night, traveled over 4,400 kilometers to play in Halifax today. No excuses. They left it all out on the field. And over the course of the regular season, they didn't come away with a clean sheet in their last 11 games. Back-to-back -back clean sheets, a commitment to defending, and they're moving on, Jordan Wilson. They were committed today. <laughs> they were committed. This is a group that we've talked about, we've questioned. If there's contention within the group, do they like each other? Are they working for each other? That they were... They were committed. Mm. They ran the extra mile. They, they fought together. Headers, clearance, energy was there, KJ. All of it. Just to squeak and get that one-nil win. Absolutely marvelous performance. One of the greatest away performances in the history of the Canadian Premier League. Undoubtedly, and absolutely everything collectively and more. That's the kind of effort that James Merriman's been asking for for weeks. Well, let's hear from the Pacific manager, James Merriman, joining us pitch side. An emotional 100 minutes of football. Your side left it all out on the field today. How proud, of you, uh, proud are you of the commitment of the performance by your team here today? Uh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. They're, they're, they're an impressive group. Um, they're a frustrated group as well. Everybody's been writing us off. This is a ridiculous trip out here, the travel, um, to come in and, and, you know, buy into the match plan and be there together 100% and do what we needed to do to get the win and get the result in advance, you know? Now we get to rest, put our legs up, and we'll be ready to go, and I don't think we fear nobody, right? We're back. James, congrats to you and the, and the boys for a, a hard fought, mm. but great win. Please talk to us about you switching yeah. The mentality, formation, 4-4-2. Four, four, I said primitive. We all said progressive. Either way, it's a different Pacific side than we've ever seen. When did this idea come to you? Was it on the plane? Was it in the shower? Like, <laughs> how did you change this up? We're watching a talented Pacific side that plays tiki taka football usually, and you guys are throwing elbows and getting grass in the mouth. Just talk to us about, like, what this changed and how this came about. Honestly, Jordan, um, I mean, it takes a lot of the moments that have happened in the last month, two months, but we came out here um, a while ago and, and we, DJ picked up an injury just before we, gonna, we were going to come out here and play a 4-4-2 with DJ and Easton up top and play similar to how we did today because there was a, a lot of games in a short amount of time, so it wasn't so foreign to what we had planned before. Um, I think it's the moment now. It's a, it's you know you knock it's knockout football. You advance so you get that spirit and the collectiveness to buy into it. Um, we made it very difficult. I don't you know very very difficult. Of course they're going to push towards the end, but we defended very well, very organized. You know I can't speak enough about our center back pairing and our. 20-year-old goalkeeper, you know, to deal with the crowd the way he did and keep his composure. Amazing, amazing progression for him. James, I was going to ask you about your defenders, but you just answered it, so I'll finish up with, with you. You won this championship with Palmer Car in 2021 as, as, as his assistant. You've coached in CONCACAF, but yeah. where, where does this yeah. rank right now, my friend, as you're uh, right up there? Is it going to be number one for you as a head coach right now so far in terms of the games you've managed over the past couple of years? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the championship with Pa, the, the, the Whitecaps match with Pa, and I think the Herediano game last year was one of the best games, even though we went out in penalties, and, and this is right there. This is right there, but, uh, but now we want more, right? You guys obviously have the talent combined with belief. It can do incredible things. We're looking forward to what you have in store next week. We'll chat with you, th you then, James. Congratulations. Uh, go rest up and maybe lay back. Enjoy the lengthy travel back to Vancouver sure. Island. Uh, the rest is well deserved. Congratulations. Well done. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. James Merriman of uh, Pacific joining us. They had everything thrown their way. And he's right. And it was deservedly so. A lot of people have been questioning Pacific based upon their form and their performances, uh, but they've really turned things around. Just wonder if that goal on Wednesday night could galvanize, bring out something more of this group, and it absolutely did in this one today. Your Volkswagen change maker moment of the match. Well, it's going to be the match winning goal. It was really well worked out of the back. Pacific played excellent in transition all game long, and some errors at the back contributing to the lone goal of the game, KJ. Yeah, look, if they were going to play that way and defend in that manner, you had to have a bit of a transitional threat, right? And I think it's about 13 seconds uh, from one, winning the ball back to ball going back in the net. That's the kind of goal you dream of when you set up that ability to play through that, you know, how you're going to play through them and the ability to play in wide areas. Um, look, it's unfortunate. Zach Fernandez has had a terrific season. He couldn't do much else than that. And he obviously will try and do better next time, but it's a bad goal to give away if you're Halifax. A uh, bit of a sucker punch as well in the transition. But again, Kakuta Mane, who is a big part of this team mm -hmm. and hasn't played the role they needed to this season. Great delivery on Wednesday night and then plays the role to do it again today. Yeah, he was, you see Kale Lockyer as well, the pace that he has when he's going down that left side wheels and just shifts him. He knows he's going to go and take it around. And honestly, for Zachary Fernandez, it's one of those things where he knows he has to get a touch on it because that's a tap-in for Adonai Reed as well. It was a pressure, pressure situation for the fullback. And just unlucky. A couple things. The goalkeeper, Philly, just needs to hold his ground. He needs to stay on the post. Like, there was no, you know, potential that Mane could have beat him from that angle. I'll say this about Kakuta Mane, though. I saw Pamadou Ka when he was in Toronto when his Charlotte FC side was in town, and they asked him about Pacific. He said they're going to be okay. They got my guy Mane. Mm -hmm. And he's a big game player. His resume speaks volumes. And he's come to good at the right time for Pacific over the course of this 2023 season. The All-State save of the match, a little bit straightforward for Emil Gazov. Give him another clean sheet, but it came in a big moment, Jordan Wilson. Yeah, I think today when I'm looking at Emil Gazov's face, he was confident. And this is a big push. This is a moment where you can be shaky at Halifax Wanderers ground. I've played here. The fans literally feel like they're on top of you. He was hearing that for all 100 minutes today and stood firm. That is a strong paw. KJ pushes that a a wide, but he just had a big boy performance as well. It's a good pull and it's a good performance. The thing about Gastoff that I don't think it gets enough discussion is he's actually athletic and his footwork allows him to be in the right spots more than not. And his footwork on that, again, he, does, he wants to go, he comes back, and if you look at his balance, he's ready to where he receives it. Obviously, he wants to work on the ball of catching it a little bit more than punching sometimes. It's a lot of work for him to develop. As a 20-year-old goalkeeper, um, you know, with that intense environment, I thought he played really well. I mean, the, the possession <laughs> in this game, like 4-1 to one in Pacific's favor, a lot of pressure on Gazdov. He was right outside the kitchen. The supporters ended the stadium in Halifax. He felt that pressure. Bend but not break. And he comes away with a clean sheet. And Pacific are moving on. They're going to take on Cavalry or Forge with a chance to get back to a Canadian Premier League playoff final. And Zachary Fernandez's own goal turns out to be the match winner. We'll discuss from a Halifax perspective as well. And we hope to chat with their gaffer in Patrice Geyser coming up next. Take a look at your full-time stats, 72% possession, 14 shots for Halifax. They huffed and they puffed. They just couldn't put one past Pacific on this day. And it's the West Coast side that is moving on, coming out of this 3-4 game at a coastal clash. Gareth Wheeler, Jordan Wilson, Christian Jack with you. Joined pitch side by Patrice Geyser. Patrice, we're sitting there thinking, man, it's just not Halifax's day. Is that what you kind of felt from your perspective? You did all you could, but the result just didn't fall your way? Yeah, I mean, we ended up hitting three posts, had two cleared off the line. Uh, I, I give a lot of credit to our guys. 
um, that the second half we certainly brought it all we could um, and the bounces weren't really going our way everything was a bit short everything was a bit long and we take the experience it's really difficult to take it because I still think we did enough to get something out of it but we didn't and you know that's the cruelty or the beautiful part of this game depends on which end you're at today mm. but Chase I'm gutted for you uh, just but just the way that Halifax have played football this season obviously you're a big part of that but just can you tell us a little bit about what you said at halftime because you could see Pacific how they sat everyone behind the ball what was the game plan going into the second half Um, we were, I mean, we got punished, so the number one thing we wanted to do is take care of the ball a little bit more, and we felt we were, you know, our football was really predictable, we had too many guys underneath the first line of pressure, so we started to commit more numbers forward, we started playing guys more between lines, and we relied more on wide play, and, you know, that's where we got the, the, uh, the crossbars out of. You know, we were trying to be uh, uh, a bit different than we were the first half, and try to get more numbers forward. Patrice, it's Christian. I know you say you never want to be too high and never be too low, but I know it's difficult. But is there a chance, because we probably won't hear from you again live with this season on One Soccer, is there a chance that you can try and summarize this season? Like, when you get back to see your lovely wife and kids in the winter, like, how will you look back on this day in particular and what the year's been like for you in Halifax? Yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. Um, you know, I, I, I'll never forget the first eight games and, you know, going to places I've never gone to continue to believe the way we play and the, the way we do, we do things. We stuck to our principles. I'm so proud of the group for remaining with our identity and continuing to play. I, I, I genuinely believe this group has two or three extremely high elite players that keep, you know, keep moving and moving up. And I was, you know, I wish there were more games that we could have played KJ to see what we're made of. But, you know, I'm really proud of the way we grew. We got better. We learned to manage things. The, the 46th minute goals were gone. The 90 plus minute goals are gone. So we learned a lot about management and we learned to stick to our principles and, you know, continue to play football and hopefully results will go our way and we could go further next year. Can't wait for it. Well, you said it, Patrice. Uh, you have a lot to be proud of. For all that it's good off the field, you, you kind of put the focus and really put Halifax on the map in terms of the way that you play on the field. A lot of credit goes to you Thank and you. your staff. Um, we appreciate all of your time this season. Heartbreak today, but brighter days are ahead. Thank you so much, Patrice. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Patrice Geyser joining us here in the post-match show. It's funny in the Canadian Premier League, it seems over the course of the history of this league, there's been a lot of big away wins in playoff time. And I'm gutted for the fans and the bars and everyone in Halifax because that city would have gone off with a big win tonight. But yet again, away teams in the Canadian Premier League somehow, some way, finding a way to get the job done. He's right, KJ, three times it went off the bar in this game. They kept on knocking. And we're just sitting here saying today, it's just like, it's just one of those days. And we see it in football oftentimes. You do. And I will say to you guys, sometimes you just know it's not your day. You know, thankfully, they didn't think that. They kept playing from whistle to whistle. But, you know, they, they, you know, they had opportunities. The only thing I would say is that the goal really killed them because I just felt that even though the opportunities were created, there was a little bit, there's just a little bit hesitation, it's a little forced, and then sometimes it just wasn't that clarity of finish when they really needed it, Jordan, for me. But look, they created a number of chances and the bounce of a ball here or there. We know what an act, it's, Gareth, it's an act of randomness, this game sometimes, you know? When in sheer, a different there, and it could have gone their way, it just wasn't their day. And, and look, they will have their day. Teams learn a lot from losing, and that they will benefit from this going forward. I, I mean, Didich, Mayor, Jaguar, Dadaluk, Mukumbiwa were great across the back line. The two midfielders as well in, in Young and Aparicio. Was it more Pacific, or could have that little bit of inexperience in the Halifax side, and maybe the pressure that they were feeling in a game like this, did that have a significant impact on the result here. Yeah, I, I know where you're going with this, because I want to say necessarily pressure. I know that is a factor, but looking at the match as well, there's just sometimes the rhythm you get into when you cannot score. Like, it just, it, it almost seeps into how you are. You're like, it's, it, it sometimes goes the other way when you're letting in goals late in games. It hits the 90th minute, you're like, man, 
we're going to let in a goal. For, for Halifax today, they did everything that they normally do. They possessed, they tried to play through the middle, they got quality crosses at times. But there was just something that would not allow them to get the ball across the line. And it played in their mind a little bit. And I don't know if I'm going to just equate that to pressure, but it was just something in the air like, we cannot get across the line. And then looking at Pacific, they were like, we got this. They have to go and beat us, especially the 1-0 lead really helped them. But they were like, we can do this today. I, I, mean, I mean, Patrice and his staff will have an autopsy about what went wrong in this game. What about team selection? Big calls. Perutz on the bench to start the game. Timoteo had been really solid at left back. Puts Fernandez in more of a natural position on right back. As harsh as it sounds... Did Halifax get it wrong today in terms of their team selection? Well, I mean, I try and think what, what was the idea behind it. I think for me, the Fernandez at left back was to combat the pace of Dada Luke, which I think he did. Particularly, Dada Luke was outstanding in the game, the mm. best player on the field. Um, but, you know, defensively, not necessarily going forward. So maybe that was the reason, but he did take away a little bit from what Fernandez can bring. Coimbra got ahead of, uh, off the bar. You know, I mean, he did okay. Um, so I'm with you, particularly with Peruzzi. If you've got to play like that, I think he probably should have played. The other thing I thought about is they miss Morelli. I think oh, they miss Morelli because I think he's just smart and intelligent and he's, he doesn't need a number of chances. He can operate in between the spaces um, and his injury has, has certainly been a big problem for them. Yeah, Morelli's a, a big, a huge loss for them, especially in a game like this. But I'm with you, Wheels. You said it in the beginning of probably 55th minute in terms of putting Fernandez on the right and I would have subbed to Mateo just because you know what type of game it is. And I asked Patrice, right, what you said at halftime. Because for me, you were watching in the studio, the 35th minute you could have switched it to just being a crossing team. Get balls in the box. Pacific said, if you're going to beat us today, you are not beating us through the middle. You're beating us down the flank. So I think if you're Halifax, should have been quality crosses uh, a, a little bit earlier in the game. Uh, you know, you, you can nitpick. It's tough either way. What I can't believe is playing... The, the team that have, having the starting 11 that Pacific did and the work rate you saw from Daniels and Ongaro and Mane and Reed and holding that team together and picking their times to press when they like this was a completely different formation for Pacific that stands out more to me than anything that Halifax maybe got wrong with their team selection how it worked so well Fantastic. for Pacific uh, a Merriman masterclass in this one and we're going to hear from Kakuta Mane two games Two big moments and two goals scored for Pacific. And those two goals enough to send them through to next weekend with a chance to move on to a Canadian Premier League final. The road to the North Star Cup rolls on here on One Soccer. And we're going to hear from Kakuta Mane next. It's excited. You know, excited for the group. Um, it's been a rough um, 74 hours, 72 hours for us, you know. Um, won that game and turn around, travel, you know, 12 hours later, and then, you know, we got here literally less than 12 hours ago, and then, you know, we had to turn around, delay flights, sleep at a hotel, uh, airport, and, you know, all of that stuff, I think. You know, I'm really happy for the group. They put in everything, we've, we've put in everything we have, and, you know, we got rewarded at the end. You know, that's what this group is all about. You know, we fight till the end, um, I think. You know, you can hear the music, you know, the spirit in the group, it's, it's been amazing. It's been building throughout the season, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for the guys and, you know, proud for the organization. And, you know, they've tried everything to make the travel easier for us. And, you know, um, but the guys, you know, we took it in the chin and, you know, um, nobody was talking and we came in and got the job done. Okay. Um, what was the message in the locker room uh, for kickoff there today? You know, was it about keeping things simple to start? or just about playing your game? Uh, it's about keeping it simple. Um, we know it's a playoff game. Um, you know, uh, we believe that we could have won the uh, league and then, you know, get away from us, um, you know, in the mid middle of the season. And, you know, coming to this, it's like, it doesn't matter how you get in, you're in the playoffs. Um, and the games are, you know, they're coming, you know, thick and fast. And, you know, it's about us playing our game and implementing add-ons into our games, you know, uh, which will fit the you know playoff run. And I think we 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 believe that we have the group to do it. Um, we can play <clears throat> different different styles and you know get results. And today we played a little bit different, you know, than we normally do. Um, which Halifax is a you know amazing team. I don't know if you watch them. They they're very very good. You know they're very good on the ball. They understand the system very well. So uh, we needed to dig deep today. Uh, the boys, we did that, and you know we're you know um, luck on our side today too. So we got that. We'll take that all day. 
fantastic yeah. uh, After the goal, it seemed like Halifax had the lion's share of possession after that. Was that strategic that you guys kind of were going to drop into a bit of a shell if you gained the lead, or was that just them going for it and a byproduct of how the game kind of... No, it's just, it's just them. Like I said, Halifax is a very, very good team. And, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy. Um, you know, we had something to hold on to. And so, uh, naturally, players, we tend to, you know, clinch under that and um, we drop back a little bit than we, we wanted to. But that, that's just a natural reaction of players, you know. Uh, when you have something to hold on to, you, you know, want to do everything you can. And, and um, we, didn't, we didn't really want to drop that far, but, you know, the game called for it. And, you know, I don't want to make excuses. The travel has been horrible. Yeah. It's been really, really bad for us, so we thought, just sit back, soak in the pressure, and you know we have the the defenders to do it. You know, uh, Didich and TNG, and you know the back line was fantastic. The back six, seven, they were very, they were fantastic today. They made the game so much easier for us. Um, you know, we feel like when we get into situations like this, you know, uh, they come alive. You know, they were locked in today, and you know we're gonna need that for the rest of the playoff run here. Things got a little heated the last ten minutes, and then after full time. Is that just expected in a playoff game, heavy environment, somebody's going home, all water under the bridge now for you guys? Uh, for sure, for sure. I, I mean, uh, it's football. It, it, nothing that happened uh, 10, 20 minutes ago, it's, it's all gone. You know, it's about for us, you know, getting ready, um, you know, we get our players back, no matter what, you know, what situation we're in. You know, these are the guys we travel with, but these are the guys I've, we've been, you know, together for all season. And, you know, whatever happened, we got each other's back. And for us, it's about, you know, trying to get home as quick as possible, um, you know, get a rest and see what happens in the next game and, you know, see where we're going next. Okay. Awesome. Last call for questions on Zoom. Please use the raise hand function if you have a question. Well, Kakuta Mane, you'll be either going to Calgary or Forge. That matchup, one versus two, coming your way at the top of the clock. Pacific will play the loser. It's the second chance to go on to a Canadian Premier League final. The winner of Cavalry Forge, well, they'll play host to the Canadian Premier League final in two weeks' time. It's been a rivalry since day one in the Canadian Premier League, fitting that these two sides are going to do battle again in this new playoff format. A complete preview's next. Cavalry Forge. It's the playoffs on One Soccer.